Right. What are you going to do about these? Hello, and welcome. Now, while I'm waiting for the paint to arrive for the engine so we can make that gloss black, we can sort these out. And I thought they weren't in too bad condition, but now I've got them off and I can really see them. I can see there's quite a few dents and little scratches on them. So I'm gonna have to sort those out and then give them a good polish. Now there's lots of amazing videos on polishing these engine cases. So I won't try and replicate that, you'll be pleased to know because it's quite a long and involved process. But we'll have a look and I'll show you what I've been doing. I'm not an expert at, at many things. I'm not an expert at polishing. So we'll probably blunder our way through it as usual. I mean, it shouldn't be too hard because I mean, they are essentially polished already. It's not like they're raw alloy or anything. But there's a few things to, to sort out and a few pieces. A few pieces. It's even got a nice alloy. Oil cap. Lovely meat bikes. And I think when these look good with the black engine, that'll look amazing. So let's bring you in for a closer look and I'll show you how these are doing. Here's the right side case. And apart from the dirt, which will be uh, easy to get off in a sec. The weird, it's a strange gummy stuff, but either way, not a problem. You can see we've got some scratches and damages to the case here. Not deep, but um, noticeable. I may not take them all the way out, because there's so much alloy you'd have to rub away just to get rid of them. I'm not sure it's worth it, so I'll probably get rid of more of this surface kind of scratch but any sort of large divots will probably leave I think it'll add character anyway and go with this sort of a vintage retro theme especially these large grooves here I don't feel motivated to grind them all the way out especially as they're barely visible and they were caused by the original brake lever when the bike was crashed, the brake lever was bent up into the case there. Look. So I know ironically we talk about engine protection bars a lot and they're very popular. The engine doesn't, doesn't hit the ground in Classic 350. The handlebars stop it. And to some extent the um, brake pedal stopped it hit the ground, bent up. So if the engine protection bars can stop the brake pedal hitting the ground, that is going to stop your engine damage. Because even though this is quite badly crashed, the engine doesn't hit the tarmac. It's quite well protected. They've got a lot of scratches, just surface scratches, most of it. Apart from the odd divot. All fine up on top. I'll have a proper look when we've cleaned this off now. But this side's fared quite a bit better. No big chunks missing, but a lot of those light scratches. And I can see it's just starting to corrode as well. But the metal polish will sort that out, no problem. So left side got away much better. 
Then we got the cylinder head cover, and I bet you didn't know you had all these stickers on top of your bike. So we'll take those off. But the fact that they're completely invisible makes me think I don't want to be too obsessed about polishing the top, because obviously that's all you see. We will do it, of course. But we won't go nuts. And we've got the oil filter cover. And that lovely little oil cap. Right, which one should we start with? I think, let's start with the head, because I can try out techniques on the top where it's not that important. And it'll be like an early win, unless it goes badly, and then it'll be a right demoralizer, won't it? Yeah, got some lovely little polished areas where the, <laughs> where the stickers were. Lovely. And this black marking, you can see that's alloy corrosion. Very, very dull, obviously, but much flatter. We've got a scratch left there. I mean, I say scratch, these are absolutely tiny marks now. Let's go up a grade on that paper. Okay, so the last one was 1200 grit. This is 2000. some Maguire's metal polish coming because it's highly recommended. But that hasn't arrived, so we need some Autosol, which we might remember from the Meteor exhaust. Looks pretty nice. Smooth. nice. 
nice, isn't it? So that's how it was. That's how it is. Look, see my face. There we are. I spent about two hours on that, which is enough to make me think I don't want to do any more polishing. And it's come up pretty much as I expected. I think it could be better, but it is nice. It's a bit hard to tell with all the light. The top, I didn't do any sanding on. I just polished, which you can tell because it's got the tiny sort of corrosion marks, but it's not visible on the bike. Obviously the whole top literally isn't visible. So I don't want to go nuts. So I think it's got a couple of polishes left in it to make it as good as it can be. If you imagine that engine black with that shiny cap on and the shiny sides, that's gonna be brilliant. Now, there's obviously hours of work there. I did buy some machine polishing attachments. So I'm gonna give them a little try and we'll see if it saves any time or if it ruins everything. But if I can get it like this, that will be fantastic. Let's have a look. Now, I've got a little play. Remember, I had this old kit somewhere. So we've got a polishing compound, a drill attachment, and I've got the oil filter cap here. So if it goes badly, I can just sand it down and do it again. I'll just get some polishing compound on this. on this wheel and not getting near the engine. This I think I want to rub down, but I just wanna have a quick go, just in case there's a quick win to be had. I don't think so, but um, we'll give it a go. So I haven't, obviously haven't cleaned that yet. That's not bad. As you can see, look, it's left scratches in, which I was kind of expecting. But the overall effect is it's very polished. So I can see if I can polish those scratches off now. But considering 10 seconds ago, it looked like that. And now it looks like that. So I'm gonna give this a clean up. And we'll see if that might be a way forward. This is why I knew I wanted to take the engine covers off because I knew need some good effort on them. Pretty good. Actually, that's still cloudy. Still got polish on. That's gonna look very pretty. Uh 
okay. I think we could say polishing wheel is quite an improvement on my manual efforts. Look at that. It's looking like chrome now. And I could go over that now with a metal polish. And that would be even better. Yeah, that's what the manual efforts gave us. That's what the polishing wheel does. So, polishing wheel, I think, would be the way forward. I better order a couple more, because I don't know if that one's going to last. Because, boy, has it got some work to do. Right. I think that's an improvement. There's the machine polished head cover. Now the top, which I didn't use rubbing down paper on, is not as good, which I expected. So it definitely still does benefit from having the, uh, the lines flattened down. Hello, welcome back to day two. So I spent about two or three hours on this yesterday, polishing it manually first, and then using the older polishing compound and wheel. And the wheel, fair play to it, did do a good job of it. It does what I'd probably call a sort of 85% job, like many automated processes or tools. It does do it very well. Not as good as it could be, but for all intents and purposes, it does do a very good job. It gives you a great shine. There's a great mirror finish going on there. It's very hard to see with all the lights on it. But it does leave its own very slight marks. So we're going to have more of a practice with that. That was that sprocket cover, not sprocket cover, oil filter cover. So remember, we spent sort of less than a minute on that with the polishing wheel. That's come up really well. Like I say, probably about 85% of what it should be. I did the sprocket cover as well. Lovely and shiny. So we'll look at this left-hand side case today. See if we can refine the techniques. A bit of corrosion on that one. So we're going to start with that one. We can rub it down. Do some polishing, I guess. But I'll stick a time lapse on that because it's going to be excruciatingly dull. So I did no pre prep on this one. And I've given it a quick run over with the coarse compound buffing wheel. And it does smooth the underlying aluminium, but it's not good enough to get rid of these um, little corrosion pits. So this is going to need. Proper wet sanding, just like that head cover. There's the 1200 grit sand. Nice and dull. A few little marks still showing, but we'll give it a try with the wheel. We'll see how that comes up. First attempt with the wheel. Not perfect, not bad. You either catch imperfections as the light shines or, or you don't. But I think we can get that quite a bit smoother. I've got to clean out all these bolt holes as well. Well, here we are so far. We got the head. We got the filter cover. 
This side is looking pretty nice now. And the sprocket cover. Finding out a lot about this polishing. It's not perfect yet. It's also obviously really good. But as you get into it, you'll see the surface is still sort of visibly. You can see this hazing. Still light scratches. Obviously, I had to zoom in a lot to see that. You don't really see it with the naked eye. Although, just if you just catch a certain angle, you can. Now, what I'm finding is the Autosol, which I'd consider not a very aggressive polish, really, is leaving its own marks, even using it gently, which is making me think that the alloy they use for this sort of has a natural softness that sort of keeps scratching as you polish it. You can't, I think it almost needs a polish that's so light, like a jeweler's polish. I mean, it's obviously, I mean, really good. I mean, it's beautiful. But it's getting almost impossible to polish it without the act of polishing, leaving even more marks. It's very hard to see. There we are. I can just see when the light catches it right. If you try and polish out the scratches, even with the autosol, it leaves new scratches. That's with it, sort of the most gentle pressure, most gentle cloths. And a high quality polish. I mean, from a foot away, it's a, oh, two feet away, it's, it, it's beautiful, it's immaculate. But I'm just trying to get it as good as I can. So we'll see what it's like when the Maguires comes later in the week. I might try a, see if I can find a very fine polish. Otherwise, really, I mean, it's absolutely fantastic. Now, time for the main event, the right side cover. This will need a lot of work. There she is. Obviously, it's going to be a lot better after I've given it a clean. Everything from here down is mainly hidden. So it'll be polished, but I'm not gonna try and get that the ultimate if I don't have to. Obviously, got some scratches we gotta get out here. So we're just gonna rub them out. And clean it up. Right, let's have a look at you. Dirty Enfield. Grey, dull and flat. Let's try the wheels.
Welcome to day 21 of polishing these engine cases. All right, only joking, it's not been 21 days, but I've spent three or four days messing around with these now. And I think I've got it as good as I can with the auto sole. It's, it's pretty good, I'll give you a close up look now. And it's, um, it is good, but I was waiting for that Maguire's polish to arrive and it just came yesterday. So I'm gonna give that a try and see how good we can get these. And I think it's gonna be a lot better. Cause I think that auto sole is kind of reached a ceiling of how good it can get with this grade of alloy. The way I'm polishing it, it isn't getting any smoother and it isn't getting any shinier. It's probably more suited to something really hard like chrome, I'm thinking. So it's good. But we'll have a go with the Maguires and then we'll definitely call it a day on these. So they are shiny, but if I get in close, if you look at the reflection of that light, you can see how it's quite a cloudy reflection. And if I point you straight at it, you can see the camera. It's quite a cloudy reflection. Some bits are better than others. There we are. Let's come up. But you can see this can be a lot better. So the Maguire's has arrived. And we'll give it a try. So Maguire's NXT all metal polish. It's quite expensive. It's about 16 pounds. But it's supposed to be the dog's knackers. So there's a before. Look how the camera looks in it. It's the first polish. Let's have a look at the camera. That's quite an improvement, I think, compared to the before. That's with just a couple of minutes. Of polishing. Much better. Right, I'll go over it all with that and we'll get it up a level. You can see how that bit is much shinier now than the rest. The end's in sight. Dummy. I think I'm done. That came out really well. I wish I'd waited for that polish to arrive. Before I did all the stuff with the autosol, because that probably would have saved me a day of messing around. Trying to chase a finish that just simply wasn't possible because the polish was just too coarse, obviously. Good for chrome, really hard metals. Not best for alloy. Okay, but not, not as good as this. Maguire's NXT, and I'm not sponsored by them. <laughs> it's not product placement, I would never do that to you. It really is good stuff, and I paid for it properly. But I'm going to paint this. Let's do that, and we'll call it done. A bit of brake cleaner and a cloth wrap around this flat tool. Just gently polishing off all the overrun. So we 
a nice crisp set of letters. Or I could have just painted it with a steady hand, but I haven't got one of those. Whoa, look at that. A lovely contrast now. Let's have a look at the whole thing. All done. I've done as much as I want to do. I'm loving the painted case. I didn't have enough of a steady hand to fill it in, but it was no problem to um, go over the edges and then just use a bit of brake cleaner on the cloth, wrapped around a bit of wood, and just scrape it off the top. Only took a sec, it's got a lovely sharp edge now. So the new polish certainly made a big difference. I don't think it made a big difference whether you used a polishing wheel or just did it by hand. Both would have been, I think, very similar. Just the polishing wheel saved your fingers a bit. Now, just got to stay on top of it now and keep them polished. Otherwise they'll have to get painted, wouldn't they? So thanks for joining me this week. Next week, this will be going back on the engine and we're going to have a finished engine, which is going to be fabulous. So we'll be masking up, painting that, putting these on, I've got the service kit so the filter can go back in and the O-rings and the gaskets, got it all. So next week, back together, brilliant. In the meantime, I'm going to enjoy this hot beverage. Greg's, for all your pastry needs. So, see you next week.